Welcome everybody to the first ever MHL Hockey Mini League Series. This is going to be the first season. As you can see, we have our divisions here. We are going to be getting right into it, into game one. All the rules will be in the description. In this first game, we have the Kessel Run versus the Hornets. This is the first ever game and is puck drop. It puck, the puck drops and we're commencing. So here we go. We've got the Hornets. They are in black and yellow. They do have the puck right now. They're moving it around, trying to get it in. We got five minute periods, so whoever scores is going to hopefully win. And there's a good save by the goalie. So the Hornets goalie making a pretty good save early and coming back. Both teams fighting for the puck in the middle. Castle Run trying to get it, but he just can't get it in. And now we have the uh, Hornets with the puck. Number 14 on the left side looking. Can't quite do anything with it. He's going to swing it around to number 9, back to 14, over to 9, in the middle to 19, who almost makes a good play there. Shoots it off the post, almost goes in. Number 10 moves it, but number 68 brings it right back. So the Hornets with some sustained pressure here early. Number 9 trying to get it in, but a great play by the Castle Run defenseman. He's not able to get it. Deflects it off number 84. He's not done anything yet, and the Castle Runner's right wing has... Remain stationary. Number 16 has not moved a single time in the game yet. We'll see how long he sits there and doesn't move. And a great shot there, almost there. And there he moves. He moves. Number 16 has moved. It's official. He's actually in the game. Kessel Run getting a couple key chances there. Just can't just can't quite bury it there. Looking for a pass, but defended well. Puck not moving. Good pass there and a nice shot, but a good save as well. So Kessel Run having some really good shots early. They're actually getting in on top of it nice and quick, but... Hornets coming right back. We got about halfway through the game here, and and both teams are really struggling to get on the board. But the first goal is going to be a big one. It's going to be the first one in MHL league history. So we're hoping to do a couple seasons of this and see how these teams do. So and and the puck is played in by 16, but it just doesn't have enough oomph to get in the net. Unfortunately, but number 16 still has it looking for something defended well here pass across looking For a good play, but nothing there. He 13 trying to move it, but he can't get anything number 16's got it now and Number 14 puts it on nothing there number 19 can't get a shot Goalies playing well both teams playing well The defenses are really stepping it up here early, but there are some good chances the puck is being moved around a lot. This is a very intense first game. So we're going to see who is able to come out on top. Again, there are no goals yet. Both goalies playing well. Both teams playing well. In this league, we will have shots recorded. We'll have save percentage recorded and individual stats. Assists will come with only one player getting an assist. Not two. Just because it's easier that way for us to keep track. And we will see how that turns out. But anyway, back to the uh, the the action or the slow pace action of no goals here. Number 14 having it behind the net and almost spanks it in there. But number 10 plays good def defense there. Number 68 has the puck. Kind of gives it right back to the defense who turns it back over. But 16 turns it over. And number 19's got an opportunity. Hits the goalie. So not going anywhere there. Number 16's got it. We... We clown on him for being lazy earlier, but he has been making some good plays. Great pass over, and he just can't get the shot away. If he was able to pull the trigger faster, that goalie was not even in the realm of that shot. So would have had been a really good shot. It's very hard to get across, but a great pass to number 14 there. And number 14 is looking, hits, bounces, and somehow ends up in the middle. But, but the Kessel Run are just repeatedly staying on this puck. They're not giving up very many chances here. Number nine, looks a beautiful shot there. Bad chance given up, a good save by the goalie there. And Kessel Runner is, number 14 is struggling back there. He's trying to get it. There he goes. We've got one minute left in this first period and it almost bounces right back into his own net. you got to be careful with that because the momentum can really uh, come back to bite you. So both teams, really, somebody's trying to look in to get on the board here. We need, somebody needs to get a goal. And number nine is going to take this puck, shoots it around. He's been trying for that shot. Good save for the goalie. So number nine has taken that shot a few times. We'll see if uh, he's able to capitalize on that eventually. Or number 16 on the very opposite side is doing the same thing. Both of those players playing well. A great pass to number 16 with 30 seconds left. Great play. Oh, and he just misses the pass. Number eight has it, moves it up. Number 19's got it. Number 19 shoots and scores. 
with the assist from number eight. Number 19 is going to get the first goal of MHL history. When the puck is scored, you have to move it out and at least pass it once before it can go into the net. Unless you're the opposing team, then you can actually score a goal, a goalie goal. So we got eight seconds left. And in this barn burner off the post, a huge shot there. And with the first game, the Hornets are going to take this one at the very end. And you can hear the crowd going wild. It was an absolute insane game. We got a nice little replay of this. A nice pass to number 16 there. He looks like he's going to try to get it up front. Gets the shot, but just whiffs on the shot. Number 8 is going to move it up to number 19, who is then going to just turn around and rip that thing. Goes far side. As you can see, both teams played pretty well. Very even game. Hornets had a few more shots, but I feel like the opportunities were pretty equal. It was just a great way to start the MHL season. We are really happy to be doing this. Uh, it's been a good experience, and we're going to get on to the second game. So we have the HB Wombats versus the Loons. Uh, well, the HB Wombats stands for hard booty, because if you did not know, the Wombat a Wombat does have a hard booty. The uh, Wombats are obviously in teal. Defending on the right and the loons are on the left Both of these teams making their debuts and the puck is dropped and the game is is going and the loons get a quick little early opportunity there, so Wombat's got to be got to be watching out here number three for the loons is able to move it up number 86 has the puck he moves it up and No shot there, but the Wombat's pushing it right back in so Wombat's just playing defensive hockey Just keeping the puck in and the loons are just gonna Struggle to get it out. Wombats are just pushing it back in and turning it over. They really need to get some possession going here. And they still have it in a weird deflection off the boards and a good play by the Loons defense. Wow, the Loons defensemen are just blocking, you know, good block shot there. I mean, that's how you win. He's going to try to move it around here and he just can't quite move it there. He is looking, but he can't find anything. A good block by the defenseman for the hard booty, the HB Wombats. I think it's very important that I say that. And a good block by the Loons, so a pretty good defensive game so far. Both uh, both teams uh, trying to get something going. The crowd getting pretty chattery, pretty jittery. We're looking for some more goals. I mean, we don't really know what it's going to be like, the amount of saves and goals, how many goals are going to be scored. We don't really know any of that because this is all brand new. So we'll see how these stats end up turning out. But like I said... We'll see and a great shot there. I think that hit the post. It was kind of hard to tell we it, it was almost So quick I couldn't I couldn't really see it It was a, just a beautiful shot by the Wombats and we're gonna have a little bit of a malfunction here Trying to fix this little guy and we're gonna take a break here to fix that and we got the instant replay on this shot here And we're gonna see what exactly it hit. Uh, we couldn't actually see what it hit so with that replay, we're coming back in after a quick intermission because one of the players was off his little, his little ring. So we're going to see if either of these teams can get on the board. It's just a dominant defensive game. I wouldn't be surprised to see only two shots apiece at this point. Number 86 is playing out of his mind, and the goaltender, number 72, for the Loons, is playing pretty well. Good shot. A sneaky shot there. Almost made it in. And a good block there. Everything is, all stats are recorded live. And so we're going to do our best to see what actual stats there are. I mean, we may miss a shot here or there, but we'll do the best we can. And that's a beautiful deflection, but it, it does not able to go in. And number 72 is facing backwards. Probably want to get your goalie in the right direction if you want to make any stops. Nice little outlet pass backwards to the defense. So I guess the loons are trying to... Pass back to the defense, and there's a struggle in the corner here. The Wombats, number 22, pushes it right in the middle, and a really horrible shot by the center there. Don't know what he was trying to, to get out of that. I'm not exactly sure. But moving it back down, and around number 13, back to number 11, and over. Great play, and off the post, 47 almost comes through there, and a big play, but number 96 gets shut down by the goalie, so number 72 is playing well. I mean, Bobrovsky is number 72, so that does make sense. Now, number 47 moving the puck and loses it immediately, but the center stops it, and a great shot by the right wing of the Wombats. So the Wombats getting some chances here. We've got a minute left, a minute 45 left, and this is turning out to be like the first game, you know, a pretty tight-knit game. Another post hit there, so Loon's trying to get, trying to do something here. He's looking for number 98. He just can't get it, and he just banks it off the end boards, and 
this is just a chaotic start. Neither of these teams are really able to get much offense going. It's just perimeter play and the puck moving back and forth. So these are very different play styles than what we saw in the first game. The Loons being more of a defensive throw it at the net, if possible. And the Wombats just chaos throwing it in. Number 96 makes a good stop there, but unfortunately he's not able to score. Both of these teams are doing their best, but like I said, this is a very defensive and different game. We are down to one minute left, and both of these teams really need to get a goal. I mean, they want to get into the standings. All teams will make the playoffs, but number one seed will get a bye. So you're going to want to be that number one seed if you possibly can to make life easier on you. Both of these teams looking for something, but still nothing there. So Puck moving around, good pass, but he just does, he likes not to shoot. He goes, He tries to turn around and do a backhand. Not really sure what he was thinking there. I should have put that one on net, but maybe he'll get the next one. We don't really know. And we're going to see uh, the center the hair, number 98, almost has a really good chance, but he can't bury it. So both of these teams are going wide with their shots. It's going to take one shot, and that's all it takes to really blow the game open. I mean, or actually win the game, because clearly no one can score here. And he passes it to the defensive team and into his own net, and now he's just crazy with it. Good block there. That was a really key block. And another key block there, so... Just a really crazy sequence. Just a lot of blocking pucks. And with three seconds left, both of these teams are going to go into the game, the league's very first overtime. Overtime consists of the first player to score, obviously, is going to win. There will be no time limit. It's just going to be the puck goes down and whoever scores win. This is like basic NHL rules where if you do score... Or since you've made it to overtime and you lose, you get a point. If you win, you get two. So these points will be pretty precious considering how few games there are. Both teams really needing a point. I mean, this is the first game. It's good that you get the one point, but it'd be really nice to get the second point as well. So we're going to get prepared for this puck drop. Both teams settling in. And like I said, I just want to take a moment to say we're really excited for this series and puck drop for overtime. First official MHL overtime of all time. And it's in the second game of the season. So, I mean, it wouldn't, it would, it's pretty fitting. We'll see how many overtime games end up happening because I could see a lot of tight games where nobody scores. So, both of these teams moving the puck around, still unable to score i i mean i just don't know which team is going to score there was a bounce pass over number 86 and what a little shot there a squeaking shot makes it in by number 22 the right wing with an assist from number 12 the left wing and he, he was just able to get that puck and just turn it around and just squeak it in there and that's a pretty big victory you know that one extra point is going to matter and you can see from the replay here number 22 just grabs this puck moves it down low moves it up Puck moves back, and that one hits off the post. And number 12 here with the bank pass, and here's number 12. Does a fake move, puts it on his backhand, and just off of number 86, actually. So, close game. The, the Wombats got just absolutely just shots like on crazy. So, just a really good game overall. Wombat's going to take their first victory. Loon's going to get a point, though, so don't count them out. They're still in here. And lastly, we have the Liberty and the Flying Pucks to round out the season, the week one games. Flying Pucks are in orange on the right. And we have the Liberty on the left in the blue. Both teams a little slow to the start here. Puck goes behind the net and the crowd is, is loving it. The crowd is absolutely loving it. And we love it and, you know... We've got all sorts of skill level players at this tournament, so we'll see what's going on here. They're struggling. They can't figure out who needs the puck, and now Orange is going to get it. Orange is going to grab this puck and move it across. Good play right there. And the puck is moving at a pretty slow pace, but it was a good block there by number, by number I, is that 36. He's spinning too much. I couldn't see who it was. Number 52 has this puck, trying to do something with it, and... and and <laughs> number 45 is just going on a spin cycle. Number 52 just turns it over immediately to the other team. And we're going to see what, what he's able to do. That's a nice pass there for the Liberty. Number 67 looking to play with it. And he tries to go for the shot, but good defense there. 
Number 18 has it in a great shot. Almost it went in off the post and it's rolling. It's going right onto the stick of number 9. He's got it and shoots it to the outside. So number 9 oh, gets it back on. Number 18 back on. But he's not able to actually finish that. So just a crazy sequence of events. And nobody really knows what's going on at this point. But this is what makes this league so much fun. And they're going to move the puck up. And I don't know how that puck got so much momentum. They must have collided or something. So we got number 52 on the top with the puck. Looking to do something, but defended very well. So the puck's playing very good defensively so far. They've gotten a few chances, but nothing too outstandingly worrisome for either goaltender. Both goalies playing pretty well so far. And the puck bounces in. Number 9 somehow got that, that goal. We don't even know what it hit. We are we are absolutely shocked that that puck went in. So we're going to see what happened there in a moment. But the pucks are going to get the first one here. And we're going to see which one of these teams can actually come out on top. I mean, it's pretty early. There could be definitely more than one goal scored. I mean, we have the theme of one goal per team so far. But that doesn't mean that that can be broken very easily. So we've got the flying pucks with the puck up top. Chips it into the corner and... Just is not moving, does not want it. And and the puck's moving it behind the net. Still can't have it. So there is a puck ragging rule of no keeping the puck when you have the lead behind the net or anywhere. It's basically move the puck and try to score repeatedly. We are all, you know, good friends. The owners of these teams are friends. So there's really no hard feelings of like puck ragging or intentional. We can tell that everyone's trying their hardest. So. We aren't too worried. And there was an open shot, and number 36 almost puts that one in. So a really close one there. So these teams, they're struggling to get their footing. I'll be honest. They're struggling a little bit to get their footing. Number 67 has the puck. He's trying to move it, um, dangling a little bit. Puts it on net. Be, well, behind the net, technically. Number 52 has this puck. With a minute 50, he's looking to get it across. He does. Great play there by him, and moves it in, bounces it off the defenseman, and, and number 36 is just doing a spin cycle, and number 67 realizes he can get that puck, shoots it, just goes a little bit wide. So, good play there. So the left wing of Flying Pucks is playing really, really well. The left wing is uh, coming up and making some really good plays, and number 18 over there, he's been producing some pretty good chances, so have to keep an eye on him. And the crowd is just really loving it. The crowd loving these two teams. I mean, two very well-liked, loved owners. So, just overall, really fun time here. But both of these teams do want this win. And they are just going crazy. Good shot there. He's got it on net. But, I mean, he can't really do too much with that. The goalie's right on it. Number 54 is just sitting on it, literally. With one minute left, Liberty are going to need a miracle. And the Pucks are just going to need to keep f firing that thing on net if they want to, you know, get one more goal for the insurance. Number 18 has it. Shoots it off the outside of the net. So that was a really close chance. And moves it across and moves it back across. So number 18 just moving the puck around. At least she's moving it. She's trying to get it up. And unable to do anything with that. Still has it. Number 18 again. So time is going by. 30 seconds left, and these teams really need to figure it. Somebody needs to score. And number 9 can't get it. Liberty going to have a good chance. And number 5 can't quite get it. Number 9 can't get it. With 20 seconds left, Liberty really need a miracle at this point. So number 52 is able to steal that. He's going to move it across with 15 seconds. He's trying to get it in front. Can't get it. He's moving it. Trying to. He's just trying to do anything he can to hypothetically get that puck there. Back across to 67 with one last opportunity. And it's going to be blocked by number 36. The Flying Pucks are going to take that game in hand, getting their first victory of the season. As you can see, the shots were pretty non-realistic. It was 2-0, to zero, so the Liberty have some definite offensive woes. They have some trouble to work on, but defensively, I think they played pretty well. The only allowed two shots is pretty good. So looking at the stats, these are the stats. We want to thank you guys for watching and come back, and we'll catch you in week two. Thanks for watching.